Yo, yo, welcome back to Project Gaming. My name is Cal, and today we're going to be looking at the Titan Army G27 P8 QD OLED. This is a 2K 240Hz gaming monitor. The name of the monitor has 27 in it, but it's actually a 26.5 inch OLED panel. There's a 360 version of this in addition to a 4K option as well. So I think there's a monitor for everyone, but for most people, the sweet spot probably is this one right here in terms of performance as well uh, compared to price. The cheapest one I've seen of this in Hong Kong is $31.99, which is around $400, $410 US. But before we start, please subscribe, like, hit the bell notification. And in addition to that, can you guys follow us on X? It's in the description below. And let's get to it. We've been following Titan Army for some time now. We first discovered this brand two years ago. We did a review back then as well on the Titan Army A34QGN. To this day, it's my daily monitor at the office, still going strong. They started out with budget TN VA IPS panels, but recently they moved into OLED and mini LED panels, and that's really exciting to see. Do fact check me as this might be a translation error since Chinese isn't a strength of mine, but Titan Army should be the gaming branch of Inokin. Inokin isn't a household brand yet, but it's definitely not a startup, so that should give you confidence in their products. Let's break down OLED from a gaming monitor standpoint. There's W OLED, so the W stands for white, which is technology developed by LG. Then you have QD OLED, which is, stands for Quantum Dot, which is developed by Samsung. I won't get down to the nitty gritty of the two texts, but it seems like the market has spoken. And QD OLED tends to be more prevalent on the market. Why am I telling you this? It's to show you that the majority of monitor companies are using the same technology, whether it's ASUS or Titan Army, it's essentially the same panel. Let's take a quick look at the box. So not much branding on it. So we have the small tiny Titan Army logo on, on the front. The model number is on the side right here and then on the back we have a bunch of specs and features right here and right here on the top we have the insulation guidelines and when we open this up there's more insulation guidelines and this is important because of how thin the OLED monitor is compared to conventional monitor screens so this is my first time using an OLED as well and I wasn't sure how to hold it without damaging the screen because it is so thin and it doesn't have any bezels so apparently you're supposed to cradle the whole thing So we unpacked everything, this is all you get in the box. So you get the monitor information in terms of uh, gamma curve, color accuracy, all that stuff. You get a display port. This is a warranty card. This is hardware for the stand. This is the, the power cable. This is the, the power brink. And then this is the monitor stand, part of it as well. And then you have the screen itself. As you can tell, this isn't actually filmed in order. But I think earlier I said something about this, I wasn't sure what I said, but these are actually for VESA mounting. And these four screws, you put them into these four holes and that allows you to attach it to a monitor arm.
So once you have it all attached, obviously the best way to transport this around is hold it like this. But before you attach it onto the stand, if you want to move the screen around, I think this is the best to do it. To do it. So the same as the image that they provided, you cradle it from down here. Let's look at the design. It's got a sturdy stand. For those that play FPS games really close to their face, the legs do protrude out. So that's something to be mindful of. So I got a ducky keyboard here. Sorry. Here, this is a ducky mini one. And it's basically covers the entire distance right there. So working our way up, there's a metal hook for cable management. And then if we go further up, there's a metal hook for, well, it depends on how you want to use it, but it's designed to hang your headphones. It's nice to have, but I personally, I wouldn't be using it that often just because it sits behind the screen. So you put it like this, but then every time you're using it, you gotta reach over. So I don't know how practical that is, but it's there if you want it. Let's look at the adjustability of the monitor. You can change the height, 120 millimeters of travel from top to bottom. The tilt is minus five degrees and plus 20 degrees. You can swivel it plus or minus 20 degrees. You can rotate it 90 degrees both ways. On the back of the monitor, we have a Titan Army logo right here. This is a heat sink in the middle. And there's a ring of RGB here, and then more RGB on the side. Under here is the vest mount. It supports 75 by 75 for those that are looking to mount it to a computer arm. Looking at the connectivity, we have a DC out, two HDMI 2.1, one DisplayPort 1.4, and an audio out. On the bottom, you have a joystick menu button. Very slim body design. It is a glossy screen, so best not to be near a window, but it does have an anti-reflective coating applied on it. Let's go over the specs. This is a third generation QD OLED panel, even sharper images. 26.5 inch 2K 2560 times 1440. It's got a 240 hertz refresh rate, 0.03 MS GTG. It's got 1.5 to 1 contrast ratio. It's got a thousand nits for peak brightness. True Black 400 standard, which is the entry level, as there's 500 and 600, which are the next levels up. In terms of color accuracy, it's got 100% sRGB, 99% DCI P3, 99% Adobe RGB, and a Delta E of less than two. All right, let's quickly look at the menu. So right here, you got exit on the left, you got brightness, input on the right, and power. It's power just turning it off the monitor on screen. Uh, if you do the enter mode, enter menu, sorry, and the first thing you have is TI, so you have AI game crosshair. So if you turn that on, you can pick another crosshair. For example, this one, crosshair six. And then you can pick the crosshair color. If we want it to be red. All right, let's see if this works. All right, so you can do that. It's not the most helpful thing, but it's an option for you if you want to do that. All right, going back to menu mode. Again, let's try this, the magnifier mode. If we turn it on, give it a second. There you go. So this, and the top right hand corner, there's a auto zoom in. It's supposed to give you a better chance of shooting. Don't know how effective that is, but that's an option. All right, go back to menu again. So we looked at that, all that stuff in TI. So let's go to picture mode. So you got standard. You got RPG mode, you got FPS mode, all these modes. 
to make it easier for you to look at the screen. And there you go. Actually, I'm gonna show you FPS mode since this is a gaming channel. We turn that on. All it does is increase the saturation. All right, let me turn this off. Okay, picture mode, this allows you to change the brightness, brightness mode, contrast, low blue light, sharpness, gamma, aspect ratio, color temperature, hue, saturation, eye shield, remind, and then reset picture settings. And then we have here game plus, all game mode. Let's see what that is, that kind of changes the screen. Then we have HDR, we have adaptive sync, we have picture enhancement, so this allows you to control CR enhancement, shadow balance, night vision mode, super resolution. And then we have game aid, which is supposed to be like your, helps you like cheat, but doesn't really do much. Refresh rate, that shows you the refresh rate on the screen. But if you have the NVIDIA driver, it's already on the top right corner. And this one is game crosshair, uh, color crosshair, we already looked at that earlier. So this gives you a stopwatch. So it's game time, magnifier mode, alignment aid, and reset game aid. And then we have, oops, we have game illumination. So this is controlling your RGB on the back, the light strips. So this is the one on this side and this one on this side. And then you have the ring, the ring light, picture rhythm, boot on and off, brightness, reset game illumination. And then we have audio. So this is volume, audio mute, reset audio settings. And then we have PIP, PEP mode. And then we have IO settings, input signal, quick boot, DTC, and then the rest. And then this is the system setting. So this is where you change your language. So when you first get your monitor, it's gonna, this is the first thing that pops up. It's gonna ask you what language you want it in. And then we have all this other stuff here. Not that relevant, but for those who wanna see, here you go. And then this part right here this is the OLED care. So this is probably the, something that's gonna be a new experience for you if this is your first OLED. So this is pixel shift. So this helps with keeping your monitor, your OLED panel in good condition. So you can set it to slow, medium, fast. And then we have screen saver. And then we have static icon detection. You want, this is strength, you have off, weak, strong, and then low power consumption, taskbar detection, boundary detection, uh, panel maintenance. And this is where you want it on. So when you have it on, it'll basically tell you when you need to do a panel maintenance, which is good in terms of taking care of your monitor. And you gotta do it every four hours, or it's recommended that you do it every four hours. Let's go back here. Oh, let's care. So we were just using maintenance panel, and then this is the protection notice. So you have it on. And this will pop up every four hours to remind you to do a panel refresh, and that helps keep with um, maintain your OLED screen. So they have also oh, this OLED care mode so you can have it a customer strong and then this is reset OLED care and those are all the features in the menu so there you have it this is the Titan Army OLED monitor this is my first time using OLED and I can definitely say it's a step up above the traditional TNVAs and IPS panels uh, the picture quality is just on another level so if you can afford it definitely go for OLED over to the traditional panels but does it make you a better gamer for personally for me on CS2 because I'm a level 2 or to level 3 face it player it doesn't make that much difference like I don't see a better I don't see that I do better with this monitor but for Doug who's a level I believe he's a level 8 face it player he said it makes a huge difference in terms of the feature of the monitor it's got everything so it can tilt it can swivel it can go up and down and go 90 degrees so that's got that covered in terms of 
software, like the in-build software, I, I think that's more of a gimmick. I don't think that really makes a difference uh, in, in gameplay. Okay, so there is a drawback of having an OLED monitor, and that is that to reduce burn-in and to ensure the picture quality is good over the long term, they have to do a maintenance on it for every four hour intervals. So what that entails is essentially the whole screen will go black for about five minutes, and then you can use it after that. And I guess for some people that can be annoying, especially when it pops up at an uh, important moment in game or something, but you do have the option to delay it uh, until you're done whatever you're doing, and then you can go run that uh, sequence. But I think it's definitely worth it, even with those maintenance programs that you have to run, just because the picture quality is so good. And in this case, in this market in, in Hong Kong, this is probably, from my perspective, the best value play if you want to have an OLED because you can get around $400 US. And looking at the, the retail shops, I can't see anything that competes with this at this level for 2K, 240 Hertz. All right, so that's it for this one. Please subscribe, like, hit the bell notification, and we'll see you guys in the next one.